There's no shortage of humans on this pale blue dot that we call home. As Dylan Moran would say, we humans are very well stocked on ourselves. So as we get better and better at the reproducing while also delaying death game, we need to grow and cultivate more and more food to sustain ourselves. Now if you add in an unstable climate and ever more frequent drought and flooding events, the job of agriculturists becomes ever more challenging. In a response to the burgeoning population, a lot of people have begun to grow their own food. But this is a very time-intensive activity, particularly if one is already shouldering a 9-to-5 office slog, learning to become a concert oboist and ferrying the children to and from hacky sackathons. In this series, my first learning journey with our alma mater for masochists, the School of Sisyphus, I'll be taking on a rather popular Arduino and Raspberry Pi project, which involves the monitoring of the environmental conditions of a plant. In this case it will be a pot plant, but it's something that's expandable to an entire vegetable garden or even a full crop if you had sufficient sensors. So two sensors that are connected to a Raspberry Pi will be giving us insight into the temperature, relative humidity and soil moisture conditions of the plants that we're monitoring. This gives us access to information to enable us to monitor historic and live data and eventually even factor in automated irrigation into the process. This helps to keep our plants alive while we've barely enough time to floss and take our multivitamins. So when I first tackled this concept for my final year design project last year, everything had to be learned on the fly. And I had no overarching bigger picture in mind other than the vague idea of measuring conditions of a plant using sensors. So the concept and the operation of the various sensors in use was already known to me. But that was about it. So I had to stumble my way through the basics of Python. So I had to stumble my way through the basics of Python. Python. Stumble my way Python. Haphazardly learning only the bits that were immediately relevant to the project at hand. It soon struck me that there had to be a better way of doing this if time constraints weren't such a push factor. So my resulting first crack at the project left a lot of room for improvement. The coding was quite inefficient and the overall project planning and flow um, of the entire concept was a bit of a mess. My aim with attempting the project again at my own pace is not only to learn the fundamentals of Python and the Raspberry Pi properly, but it's also to bake in best practices from the ground up, right from the beginning. The project's going to develop through a couple of iterations, starting with an output of live sensor readings right to the Raspberry Pi terminal and culminating in a fully fledged web application that's going to be providing email notification of alarm conditions and it's going to be accessible right inside of a web browser. Along the way we're going to learn how to interact with Raspberry Pi's GPIO, General Purpose Input Output Functionality. We're going to be learning the basics of Python applications. We're going to work with Flask to create a web application. We're going to interact with SQLite databases, both locally on the Pi and in the web application server. We're going to build our own RESTful API endpoint that we'll be interacting with from the Pi. All of this using Python. Each video in the series will break the task up into specific functions that build incrementally on the pieces that came before it. So it's your choice to click on through and watch only the ones that you find immediately relevant up to the point of functionality that you desire from the project or you can follow, learn and fail along with the entire process. Sit still. I am sitting still. <laughs> so let's learn to suck less at Raspberry Pi and... So let's learn to suck less at Python and the Raspberry Pi the hard way. Done. That's me done. Put it away.